Hello everybody. Welcome to Discuss and Deliberate, a Study IQ exclusive comprising a series of interviews and I'm your host Vignesh Karthik. I am a PhD student at King's College London and we at Study IQ have curated this series as a dialogue between policy makers and the aspirational youth of the nation who seek to contribute to the idea of and the building of India. It gives us great pleasure to be kickstarting the series with a strong and an accomplished grassroots politician Ms Jyoti Mani member of parliament from Karur constituency belonging to the Indian National Congress vanakkam and welcome ma'am vanakkam Ms Jyoti Mani is the first woman to be elected as the member of parliament representing Karur constituency in Lok Sabha hailing from a family of farmers from Periyathirumangalam a village in Tamil Nadu she won her first election as a councillor when she was 22 she was an active member of the indian youth congress and has held many roles including the general secretary and worked across the country in regions including the northeast ms jyoti mani is a writer as well and she has written a novel a collection of short stories and an autobiographical account of her political journey titled neer pirakku mun which would loosely translate into before the birth of water while she draws inspiration from mahatma gandhi periyar nehru and ambedkar she lives by the words of her mother let's move forward and draw from our experience today ma'am your story so far of which i've just given a brief insight is extremely inspiring to say the least india is a young nation and we see a renewed interest among youngsters especially girls who are keen to partake in politics as a girl who took to grassroots politics in your 20s could you shed some light on what were your motivations and what are the key learnings it was not a a predecided decision i didn't have any plan to jump into politics and be there for long it's a kind of act against injustice i can say nothing more nothing less in my village there are two sides like every village in india one side upper caste lives other side people live those there is a war flowing drinking water in my village that people are denied drinking water we don't have any reason so one day that was the time i completed my ug and i went to join pg in between my mother was not well she underwent an operation so i decided to stay with her for a year then i thought i can go back to studies so at that time one day we were at a house on maila thaka which is from dalit habitation she used to come to our house i knew her for, from my childhood so she and my mother were started talking something i was i think reading i was around but suddenly she started crying loudly i was shocked then i went and sat with my mother and her then i realized that, that uh, there is a completely rewarded crisis in their village which is not the village we dreamed we we are thinking it's all is well uh, that was a harvest time so the, around the clock they have to work even till the midnight they have to cook then they have to go go back to the work then they, again they come in the evening then they have to go back to fetch water that is one and a half kilometers away from our village there is a small river called amravati the path is very dark the snakes will cross the road its people might get scared to go in the dark and fetch water but they have to they have no options generally this Uh, drinking water like uh, child carrying its woman responsibility generally so woman has to do the job and no man will come forward to do that so this put them under tremendous psychological and physical pressure so uh, that tears is not something which i can forget easily it keep on coming to my mind so that point of time i realized that this is very very injustice the village is overflowing drinking water every household from our community has more than sufficient water uh, the same pe- same village people who work in our agriculture land do not have an access to drinking water something is not acceptable to me so i was just thinking so that point of time i was just 21 and i was in the impression that if i have a power i can resolve the issue i used to tell my friends and all uh, even i wrote a book you mentioned it that woman that translated in no shortcut to leadership in english i wrote it in my book as well there is a famous mgr song in tamil na na ne ital nadandu vitta if i order if things happen the world will be a better place so i was in the impression that if i have a power i can change the 
scenario overnight. So that's the time accidentally you know, Panchayat election has announced in Tamil Nadu after 20 years gap. That was the first time Panchayat Raj Act is implemented. So 73rd, 74th Amendment of Panchayat Raj Act ensured the woman, 33% women reservation in the elections. So that's the first time election happened with the reservation. I, incidentally, my council, Goodalow West, is reserved for a woman. So I thought, oh, why can't I run an election? We are coming from a very agriculture family, middle class. Like everybody else, I also hate politics, so also my family. Uh, before me, the few of my relatives uh, ventured into politics, like Panchayat level, then it was a famous agriculture uh, agri movement, agrarian movement in Tamil Nadu. It was Sai Sangam and the Narayan Samina. Those are the two places my family ventured into it. But in both the cases, my relatives lost almost all the wealth. So generally, that's a thing. And moreover, I'm a woman. Politics is definitely not a woman, especially women from a background like us. So it's uh, it's like sky fell on my village kind of stuff. Especially, actually, it fell on my house. So my mother was shocked because she never uh, intended to think somebody from our family can get into politics. So that idea itself can't be acceptable to my family. So the, even the village elders and relatives, they are very shocked and they're very much worried about my life. This woman get into politics, that's, it's finished everything. So that's the understanding. Still, it's there, that perception is there, still the myth is there, but it's, I'm talking about 24 years back. So it was quite strong that time. So many people used to come to my house most of them, my mother actually, many of them, I think my mother didn't realize who they are really. She didn't know. So that many people came to my house. They, they are, of course, with good intention and love, affection, care. Because I was brought up by single mother. My, I lost my father when I was 14. So obviously people cast a lot. So I listen to them because I understand that this all advice is given in the good intention. So I listened to them all, but determined to fight the election. So finally, my mother realized that she knew me from the childhood. So I will not step back. Finally, she coming to the point that I'm just completed 21 major. So beyond the point, she or anybody else do not have any control over my life or my choices. So she made up her mind to respect my right to choose. And she convinced others also or that like, she's major. So we don't have a control over her beyond a point and she's determined to fight an election so let her uh, then she called me and very briefly she spoke to me and then at, uh, including i don't personally agree with your decision none of us in our families agree with your decision it's your own decision so you have to res take the responsibility of the outcome at the same time she told me two strong words we are known for our in our ways, are all involved in many wage activities. So you have to be either the character or the honesty is destroyed, then you and me cannot live after that. So that's a brief words she was expressed to me. I I seriously didn't realize the weight of the word at that point of time. I understand what she means. I have, I promised her I will be very honest and I will be proud daughter. I will not damage any family name or anything. Uh, so, but I was very happy. I was allowed to contest elections more than enough for me. But the village is not like that. The village is two sides, as I said. Most of them from a very humble background, uh, Dalits, small farmers, uh, especially the women and all people. They really love me to get in, see me into politics. Not, not because I will change the entire scenario. Some of someone a young and fresh uh, wanted. Because so far, uh, family is a good name. So coming from that kind of family background. So it's it's a kind of, uh, uh, everywhere there is a, all over love flowing. So then I fought an election. It was an easy election. The people who resisted in the beginning, my relatives and the people in my elders in my village also came along to campaign me. We, win, we won an election. So I, it, it's not, the story is not ending there. It's actually wins. I realized it later. So after winning an election, it's not easy to walk in the existing system because I was just 21. The system was like 60 year old stance system. We generally pe kept people out 
still it's happening so uh, there is generally official things actually people like me can take it for granted they they think anybody can take it for granted because they are officials they enjoyed last 20 years there's no panchayat election happened so whenever i will go and ask the drinking water issue they are able to do this is how one and a half years have passed then i realized that these are all the official system which will say no to anything if you if you will go and ask for a port in your place they will not ask you where there is a sea how we will build the port they will say yes we will build the port so then i realized this this naive approach will not work then i started rebelling with this rebelling with the system then i mobilized people and we started fighting as i need to fight my community and as well as the official bureaucratic system because both of them will be in the same side so i was alone and the people get scared to come and join with me as a movement so then i started fighting on my own then i was abused that's the time first time i realized that a uh, woman can people like me can be abused i never realized i never heard those words before my life i was really down i thought i made a wrong decision in my life i shouldn't have contested in election i can't do any work for my people so i started came and lie down at my home and started crying then my mother and the my lata akka which i mentioned in the beginning they were uh, together so my mother said there is no point crying i don't feel ashamed of lying down and crying like this you, you decided to fight an election start asking you come and fight it and once you made up your mind then you have to be determined to fulfill the task there is no point crying get up and go and do the work my lata ka also said we will come with you why you are crying and then i went to police station and find the complaint police never took the complaint then i went in down and said the police station by the time i don't want to involve people so they already they, they had they fought this drinking water issue even before i went to college but that time this people banned from the agriculture work because these are all the people only relying on agriculture laborers if they ban from the agriculture all they don't have any source resource for livelihood the children actually went starve so they went and apologized to the village people for their act and later they will be allowed to fetch one from one pipe that is in our area it's not their area they are around 200 families how they will have a drinking water with one pipe so that was the one want to put them into this second time so i decided to fight alone somehow we won the task and the tender happened many people helped me to get the tender back and then we mobilized the people then we we worked hard uh, to lay the pipeline even 10 year old 9 year old kids was part of the process so somehow we made successful this is just 15 days job but it took three long years to finish uh there are that time then district like mr mulanandan was very supportive so like um, the entire dalit uh, community come together then by the time that the struggle was long so many of the villages from my community also felt the uh, need to support me because they also think what jyoti saying right so why should we deny the drinking water to the people who are working in our own lands so it's a kind of villages also divided to villages most of them started supporting us Allows we won the battle. Is I still remember the day the water of that place. It was like a Tamil cinema. Uh, people are really crying. They couldn't believe that finally they had a water in their own area. They used to uh, tell me that that's the best thing they used to wish. Uh, if you get married, you will get a male child. So that that's the best wish in the village. <laughs> so they wish me like that they never knew that i am going to marry that point of time i remain single so uh, people were literally in tears so that that's i i never felt that quite an achievement at that point of time i realized that this thing which we have fulfilled that's the time i realized that even we have a power we might be in a council or mla mp or the chief minister we cannot make things work alone we need people together it's like a it's like a team task uh, we, we may be put ourselves in the front but end up the day work done by all other people together it's we together uh, we completed the work that's a great lesson i learned from the process because first if you are a woman people first try to damage your character they will try to abuse you if they couldn't face you what you fight for or what you are speaking about second thing is uh, this caste system is not easy to break, break as we think but still now the india is not what we 
think people in the cities or in the people in the like that you know india is something different india is the only country we all know the caste system exists very very crude it can deny drinking water to people there are studies shows that actually many people are denying drinking water based on their caste the third thing i realized that bureaucracy is something is very stubborn then unless until you you are very careful you are very aggressive very informative you very honest you cannot break it down so this three year process i don't think it's i wasted three years i learned many things from that that's where actually my politics starts from the people how the people are can be support you people support can make a long a long difference but throughout my life because of people i am here where i am now but that is the one thing the one thing i also feel that the support from the family is very very important that moment my mother was not supportive to me i may still crying i might resign also i never know because that was the time my mother my mother put her foot down and supported me throughout her life as long as she live this she supported me that was very huge support from my mother which i enjoyed that made a lot of difference in my life oh, that's that's really a long answer ma'am and it's a, it's a very insightful answer for that matter there's a lot of complexities involved but that said ma'am i mean activism apart i mean electoral politics is a very different ball game you just explained it to us i mean and you you emerged victorious in that as well and then you are also i mean it's interesting to note that you are popularly referred to and fondly referred to as akka i mean many people that i know i mean in youth congress or anywhere for that matter they just say ah, akka ta pasting la i mean things like that which is translated into have you spoken to akka she is approachable and things like that a very approachable personality that way so what are the key areas of interest i mean if you, if you are i mean the fact that you are approachable sort of tells that you know you do have a wide areas a wide area of interests where you are trying to sort of work so it, can you please some shed some light i mean apart from water what are the other areas of interest that you have been working on as an mp so we have uh, given five may we have given many promises because i am the only mp in tamil nadu who released the manifesto for the constituency manifesto for the first time so we have promised many small things but major five things we have promised in our manifesto uh, one is uh, skill development and employment i during my election campaign even before that i used to realize this there is a lot of gap between education and employment which is skill basically so that's a, a one of our promise for youth and students second thing women empowerment uh, system we are, we want to create whether many people are the technology as much as technology is improved uh, as much as abuse is also taking different forms so women actually goes through a lot of violence including sexual violence apart from that they have many skills uh, many talents but it's very difficult for them to exhibit it because there is no platform so we want to create a one stop women support center third thing we started that i represent the fourth largest textile sector in the country which is a home texas both is agriculture mostly except karur assembly the rest of the five assemblies is by and large agricultural based so we want to support the farmers or the farmers facilitation centers fifth is actually water management because every time the water table is going down when i was a councillor in my area the water table is around 1000 now the water table gone down around 2000 feet so instead of every time putting powers it's very important to oh, manage the water resources during the rain rainfall or other means so these are all the five major promises we made we are slowly working on it one uh, struggle now we are having is we lost our np lag funds at least that is not the only solution but it's a major support system it's it's very unfortunate uh, so if this government is known for undermining right of everybody uh, it undermined the mp's right as well by cutting down the uh, mp lag funds but despite that i am still determined to keep my promises this akka thing or you said this so that is uh, even people older than me used to call me akka now i get used to it because that's because people thinks that you are very so close to them it generally there is another one thing it's very interesting thing i you have to observe that it's it only women leaders women representative used to call amma akka jayalata called amma sonia ji used to call amma my mamda didi used to call didi so this somehow people find very much closeness with women leaders than men leaders women think actually they are their family so it's kind of they want to see them as their 
personal relatives are a friend so that's why it makes a lot of difference in my elections the uh, everybody knew that i can win the election despite very few uh, uh, had the feeling that i cannot win the election because i have a very humble background financial very, very strong background to win a candidate like mr tambidur deputy speaker of lok sabha four time mp and six and politician who won many colleges uh, but people think other way people don't money value money as a criteria they have valued what i am what i can bring into table so that basically my entire campaign is revolving around the love and care so it's basically a people movement that made the huge difference in the vote share uh, especially women i am very much confident that if 100 women came out for voting might be 95 voted for me so that's how we got a huge diff margin of 4 lakhs 20000 votes that's 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 really nice uh, now moving on to the next question as you took oath as an mp in 2019 apart from saying valga tamil which means long live tamil you also said valarga thayagam which means may the motherland prosper in this context i mean it comes to my mind that it is important to note that no movement or nation can prosper without the participation and support of women in this context what would you like to tell the young women aspirants of our channel who are seeking to make a mark in building the nation so historically we have seen wherever women are empowered the nation has the nation used to progress very quickly so women inherently have a lot of strength the compassion is their trademark i am not saying actually men are not compassionate but if compassion is something comes to women very easily the women can go for even small things they can feel very painful for others problems so they can understand the other problems very well so then they can address the problem very well women believe in finding a solution then creating a, a simple framework so when when a panchayat raj see there are 1 million women being elected as a representatives thanks to rajiv gandhi and his vision for 33% reservation in panchayat raj so when there is a study by hunger project which says women works on a, a very serious issues like education health drinking water sanitation while men believe in only mostly an infrastructure laying roads building big big buildings so so these are all the areas women can make a difference then physically also women actually induce lot of strength and that that actually made them to be made more mentally strong whether it's a, you are crossing a menstruation or a, delivering a baby even you go through a lot of physical pains actually which can be supported by your mental strength so women have inherent strength so that can can be a a little tool to change that was my belief basically there are a lot of stigma around women women cannot deliver women are weak uh women cannot work for long hours uh, women uh, will get scared of things these are all simply myths so i knew my mother uh, very much she is not an educated lady she studied only six class i even knew some anyone knew a man even my father he is also very strong at that stop but come back to my mother and father i i believe my mother was the strongest the way she approach things she never is uh, though she is emotional she is put the rational behind behind and she never uh, afraid of anything she generally faced things very strongly i knew very many women in the villages actually who run the family and as well as the agriculture uh, with with a lot of uh, force and strong and commitment uh, so these are uh, even the corporate world you know fortune five companies generally has the idea of which men and women compete for the same post they default they are actually having a woman get uh, woman elected so these are all the things we have to observe so only thing that stigmas that um, uh, this social stigmas actually blocking women so generally we have to strongly follow our heart our heart says the right things so i am not someone actually who can have the authority to advise or uh, give suggestions to other women i simply share my experience that in my experience i follow my heart and two things apart from that i do if there ever crisis i used to think in this situation my mother would have been there how she acted or i take gandhi quite often actually i go through him and in this situation how he could have been responded like everybody there should be a role model for me my mother and Mama Gandhi is a role model. So, like everybody has, has has their own role model. So that's where also you can take 
suggestions but apart from the people in public life you have to we have to listen to people around us so they are the best things i i never studied political science uh, i was a mathematics student then tamil literature student uh, but i learned my politics from my people so they are the best political science university anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world so we can learn from what people around us these are all my things but we have to believe our strength and move forward so every time this kind of abuses character assassination these are all the age old practices it's stone age practices still many people thinks by helping if i damage the character of a woman or abusing her we can send them back to uh, kitchen but that never happens in this area in, in these times no woman can uh, take this kind of abuses very easily whenever i found this kind of abuse i put the in the public domain and move on look at my generally my feeling is it's not my problem these are all the problems that the people who created this that's this not shows my character shows their character and upbringing so this though these are all the road blocks generally women have actually these days actually young women i learn a lot from them when when i go to school or when i go to college or go to even nrg sites i learn a lot from Mm, my younger generation so i uh, so it's it's a, it's all about learning but be bold and follow your heart this is the the thing which i would like to share from my experience that was simple yet profound i mean i must say so in this context i mean i'd like to sort of uh, invoke your work that you have done with covid pandemic uh, management so increasingly we see the emergence of women leaders yes across the globe and the covid pandemic has actually presented as an opportunity for them to showcase their metal nations and provinces led by women or with women at the helm have fared much better in the handling of the situation and in fact women have also been very receptive of the feedback to say the least they have also achieved and they have also been receptive to the feedback we gathered that you've been on the ground as soon as the pandemic broke out and you've been working towards the mitigation and grievances of people by engaging with the mlas the bureaucrats and other stakeholders i mean would you like to share some of your experiences as the mp in the management of this pandemic at least at a constituency level yeah of course yes, because as you rightly said new zealand prime minister jacinta ardern and um germany chancellor uh, metal and our own uh, india shailaja teacher from kerala health and social welfare minister these are all the uh, women i would i would like to call them leaders i don't believe in and creating a divide between women leader and men leader uh, so they are actually uh, progressed very much better than any of their counterparts across the globe so that way it's very very important because when we we go to the field we see the pain around the woman see what actually struck us in the beginning when we first thing what we did it we just want to prepare the government system to respond very quickly so we visited all the hospitals primary health centers and the uh, government all other offices we had a meeting with the medical college and meeting with the, with the collectorate and block development officers and the doctors in the ground and the health workers asha workers and of course uh, um, the people who actually go on the forefront of police and the uh, people in the thing so every time actually we had a first time first time action and understand that what is the shortage and we try to work out and try to support them through the mp land fund in the beginning after that we immediately realized the first 10 15 days actually people thought they will be over in 15 days the people can manage nobody calls us for any help but we realized that this will go long then first thing we did is actually what people to do for their livelihood they many of the people are agriculture laborers even people who are land holdings are small land holdings people work with the textile industries so if nobody is paying them what they will do for their livelihood they have children they have to feed them they have health issues they have to go to the doctors they have other things they have to get things from the grocery shops the people are completely left out with money so that's a first priority the woman went through the drama drama after 20 days i received phone calls mostly from women actually who started crying very badly because uh because they couldn't manage the situation when the child is uh, uh, hungry when they are crying for a milk or a food what a woman a mother can do so this is the first crisis we met so we try a uh, 43 days me and along with my the yeah, mlm mr sendil balaji is a dmk district in charge from karur so we both worked together we maybe 
uh, we actually reach out to many other people as i reached out personally to help them at 52 days actually we went village after village to distribute the relief works so that was the time we realized that government would have been supported the uh, people it's, it's not easy for a very poor people uh, without they they willing to go to work they want to earn money they want to spend but there is no work everywhere locked down every company is shut down even agriculture work they were they couldn't carry out uh, for first two three months even you carry it out in agriculture is not something which gives you weekly or monthly salary it will take uh, take a circular cycle of time few months four five six months uh, to heal something so these are all the crises which we felt based on that we try to reach out to government even i wrote to the prime minister i wrote to the chief minister and there are other issues then people struck my concerns is that from across the globe uh, across the india so we started try try and helping them to come to our village because uh, there is a literally there is government you know, state borders were sealed country borders uh, are sealed so it took a lot of efforts there are especially the people uh, women who actually uh, carry child so these are pregnant women so these are all the uh, ladies who want to come there are many places actually husband wife stuck uh, in the kerala karnataka maharashtra uh, their uh, delivery date is nearing a mother or a, um, anybody from the family who stuck in tamil nadu couldn't go back and they couldn't come so we we reach out to the local district magistrate collectors and the police officials and there are migrant laborers who wanted to go from tam my con and see to other say they start or started walking then we reach out to them then we coordinate with my constituencies comes into four different district we coordinate with collectors we coordinate with, with collectors across the states uh, so then these are all the work uh, we carry forward but one thing i can realize and i can proudly tell nowhere actually people uh, wanted uh, politicians and these mlas just for come and help us so they they don't want, they are not comfortable asking help in the first place these are all the people who have held their head high they have self respect all along their life who worked hard and earn their bread but this is the first time actually they left with no choice but take help of help from the others especially women are not comfortable at all that's why actually we put pressure on the both the central government and the state government and release the money that is a legitimate money these are all the people who have worked and paid the tax and that's their legitimate money when they are in the crisis their families in the crisis their old people and their children is starving then the government is not responding to this kind of pandemic situation when what is the point of we are the governments so that's the grievance that's the uh, feeling we are having against the government we repeatedly put pressure on the government you know my party congress party although all party meeting through the all party meeting they had made some suggestions and they also suggested where the money comes from to mobilize and distribute to people but that never reached to people so that's the uh, that's it was worst day of my political life and my personal life i couldn't sleep properly because we come very late and when you lie down you uh, you 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 will get scared when you are your phone ring at 4 o'clock 5 o'clock in the morning then somebody will be crying in the uh, other line because the i couldn't imagine yet the whole people are kids actually uh, going to bed without having food this it was a mental trauma for me till the lockdown is opening but even now people are uh, the yesterday we went some places were uh, completely shut due to one person was affected corona they are actually agriculture dalit laborers so we went and uh, distributed the relief materials we supported those are the time the many people who actually did the mini minor operations minor illness went to uh, usually go to private clinics they can't afford anymore they used to call us and please uh, tell this madre jigesh tindigal gh karo medical college so we round the clock called the uh, uh, college deals and supported them for various other uh, family physical ailments so it was like a really dramatic very i went through a real drama because uh, we are women so we cannot uh, uh, we cannot actually uh, completely kept ourselves ourselves outside the problem so we are in the middle of the crisis so that's a really tough time but we are able to manage somehow that was a really moving uh, uh, answer and in fact it was really loaded with a lot of work that's gone into ma'am and uh, inspiring to say the least i would like to move on to the next question in this note which is uh, by quoting eminent scholar nancy fraser i mean and her triad towards holistic development of any community she says recognition redistribution representation are the three pronged approach 
uh, with which any community can succeed holistically. In this context, I would like to draw your attention towards your experience in participating in parliamentary debates and what excites you about such participation. And also being an opposition MP, your speeches are very issue oriented. Uh, what is your idea about the importance of debate and discussion in a democracy? See, ours is a participatory democracy. See, unless until you don't discuss debate, nothing will come out. The very essence of democracy is listen to others and understand their view, uh, and understand views from their point of view and express it and express your view as well. So this is the essence of the democracy. When our parliamentary debates, parliament is a very democratic place generally, but I am afraid no longer it's a democratic place because many democratic norms have broken. Uh, when the bills comes to discussions, generally we, we should be given actually two days time. But now business advisory com committee discuss something and they list out something and one night before actually four hours five hours before your st debate start actually completely your entire bills will change you will force to discuss a new thing this is not something appropriate i feel see it's basically about see if i express something i'm not expressing my own uh, view view alone so i represent uh, almost 14 lakhs people and i represent the state and i represent a party and I represent myself. So these uh, there are other there are many, there are many uh, communities, groups, organizations, common meters, and representatives and represent their views. So these are all put together. Actually, we express our views. So then, when I whenever I prepare a parliamentary space, I do it with hundred percent commitment. I I am so much fond of field work. As, at the same time, I believe in reading and writing, speaking. So these are all the other areas actually which which can make an impact in the life. So I spoke on various bills on agriculture and the budget and the triple talaq, uh, and the abortion bill, uh, the many other uh, things actually as I was, uh, and language and traditions. Uh, so you know my many issues from my constructs. And so, yes, so I have I, I, I may use of the textile industry, GST, demonetization. I have spoke a lot of issues, but I basically believe in the discussion and the, um, the deliberations. But when when you speak, it's the responsibility of the government to listen and respond. If the government is not willing to listen or respond, then there is a question mark on your efforts. So uh, this is a government which is not willing to listen to other views. This is a government always wanted to bulldoze their views on the parliament and the country. So see, the, now how this government respect parliament single example is national education policy. The NAP is not being tabled in the parliament, but it was, it was about to implement it. So this is the respect this government is giving to the parliament and the debate and deliberations. I'm really worried about our democracy. The democracy is about the voices. If you curtail the voices, then there is there is no point of a country being a democracy. We are in a really a crisis time. It's a time there are many uh, young folks actually getting me out. I really request you to speak out. See, it's our right. It's not a, a voices, a voice and views is not, not belonging to any political party or any establishment. It's, it's, it's belong to us. It's our right. If you and me as an individual unable to raise our voice, your representation, your representatives has not given an opportunity to discuss and debate and deliberations, then what is the point of this entire exercise of democracy? So we are really uh, in a very critical time where the country and ideology and establishment is not willing to debate, discuss, and not willing to listen to any point of view. This is dangerous for democracy. See, taking the example of reservation, the OBC reservation is completely undermined. Almost 11,000 young doctors actually lost their opportunity. And then, uh, then UPSC rank, ranking has come. I was shocked to see this actually, the uh, EWS, however you call this EWS very eloquently, it's basically an upper caste reservation. I'm very vocal about it. Uh, so then, then how come EWS uh, ranking is lesser than the cutoff is lesser than the OBC or SCST? 
then this is actually making the mockery of the entire uh, reservation system basically reservation reservation is not an employment it's about the empowerment uh, so we are not against any child which is financially or economically weak i don't have any uh, hatred against any child the born and brought up in an upper caste and still are in an economically weaker section they can't afford study so there are various other means to support them see no child has, uh, has, uh, has decided where they have to born which community they have to born which parents they have to born so every child is an innocent child every child has an equal right to have a uh, education and employment and the contribution to the country respective of their caste religion gender so but there are social issues as i said in the beginning india is as a crude caste system because of this caste system there is a need for a social justice i am from tamil nadu i'll tell you tamil nadu has benefited the most through the reservation system because except uh, tamil nadu is the only state have 69% reservation reservation in the country uh, when the first constitution amendment happened just because of the reservation in tamil nadu that's how the first constitution Constitution amendment uh, was brought to save the reserve, safeguard the reservation in the Tamil Nadu state. Because we have various reasons. Just because Tamil Nadu has the best reservation system, we actually excel. We are successful in in many parameters, uh, social parameters, economical parameters, and better than any part of the country. So these are all the issues being discussed in the Constitution Constituent Assembly elaborately. The seventy years we have followed. So they need to break it over there. Still, we have there are many villages in the UP who I was what I was did an I had did an internship where actually still the uh, Dalit people are taking their slipper or in their hand and walking in the upper caste street. This is the India we are living in. So then uh, you don't understand anything. Then you don't want to uh, empower the uh, empower the. Uh, socially weaker communities you want to these are all the tools see where this government is attacking you see education reservation agriculture and empowerment uh, msme industries these are all the four areas the pillars of this socially deprived communities this government very cleverly attacking all the four pillars and destroying it this is an idea of rss they are also talking about hindus but they are don't care about hindus or hindu dharma they are going on a manu dharma manu dharma uh, uh, very vocally express that there are upper caste there will be a strong caste system there will be upper caste in the top the rest of the communities will be under under them we don't have an equal right we are not working for a the democracy is all about an equality say i'm not for a obc supremacy community just because of i, I am from obc so i am not uh, just because of i am woman i am not expecting a woman supreme uh, supremacy in the society i want everyone have an equal opportunity equal life equal contribution to the country so this government is attacking the basic tenet of our constitution and democracy we have to be very careful they are talking about hindus who are this in obc who's, who were who are all the hindus first obcs sc sts these are all the largest block of the hindu community so the, my my state is 70% of obcs across india it's 52% of obcs so these are all the people's reservation is undermined the, the, these are all the sc st people reservation is undermined their jobs are undermined their employment are undermined these are all the people have the land holdings these are all the people have the msme industries so if you want to break this education employment and the reservation and agriculture and the msme industries you are screwing 98% of hindus then people like me calls you anti hindu but i don't want this kind of conversation happening whether you are pro hindu or anti hindu because we are the uh, world largest proud democracy we have excelled in many field in the last 70 years because country like you was a 300 year old democracy i will proudly take a credit from my party because of course it's not as i said in the beginning it's not the congress party alone brought this country up the congress party led this country along with all other equal contribution and equal hard work uh, equal rights we build this nation we together build this nation nobody has the right to destroy it single handedly no government no ideology no leader has any right to destroy this nation we have to stand up and speak in one voice so i am speaking in the parliament but that's not here you are speaking in the street that's not here you are speaking in the social media that's not here but here is one ideology one leader one ruling establishment is out on your throat actually put something inside 
we should not allow this to happen then we can never be exist as a democracy this is a danger we are running now on in fact on that on that very pertinent note uh, we were talking about voices and on that note i mean some really strong voices of late have been uh, voices from the women and on that note i'd like to move on to the next question ma'am just currently the percentage of women in lok sabha is 14% which is said to be the highest so far but again we lag behind of the global average which is 23.6 percentage and asian average is 19.6 percentage data also reveals that amongst the registered voters women participation was higher in 13 states and in case in fact you also sort of shared your experience about the karur constituency and almost in fact it's the same as the women uh, vote share i mean uh, across all the states in this context what are your thoughts about the enactment of women representation law that earmarks 33 percentage reservation for women candidates and as a parliamentarian what are the roadblocks that you see in enactment of such a law see i am a very strong supporter of 33 percent women reservation if there is there was no reservation in panchayat raj i might not be sitting in front of you and talking to you so it's not because i contested over the reservation seat i don't have any talent uh, because i cannot fight an election i cannot win an election because i was denied in my right to fight an election because generally politics is politics many other fields such as seen as a uh, domain of a man even education was considered one point of time was a male domain dr mudalakshmi reddy who wanted to study medicine and was legally she was told actually you are not entitled to study medicine because women are not allowed to study medicine she went to the court and uh, she she fought a very long legal battle then she got a verdict she can study uh, medicine there was uh, one screen was put uh, in between the no uh, boys and mudalakshmi reddy she was the only girl student uh, in that um, course and she studied just because one mudalakshmi reddy fought and studied medicine many people have access to education now we i owe a lot to people like savitri bai phule and mudalakshmi reddy and there are other men i actually i don't want to deny their contribution like peri arne ro ambedkar there are many men behind that loss very strong loss Uh, of course rajiv gandhi who was a, was a great advocate of the 33 percent reservation for women in politics uh, so uh, i personally uh, believe that actually there are uh, uh, political parties talking about 33 percent reservation but there when the time comes actually irrespective of the party the commitment is not as such that's what my feeling uh, so when uh, when people are really get scared just 33% uh, women are com- not coming it's not we are going to take all the men space it's it's in even <laughs> frankly although i supported 33% i am not an advocate of 33% i am advocate of 50% reservation for women in politics and in any other place because we are a 50% population we right we have the right to express a right to represent ourselves how long we should be represented by men i am not saying that men are bad they are not representing as well uh, but that is a patronage but that's not a right so i want my right to be given but second thing is political parties really have a problem in uh, bringing this law see you see that there are some draconian laws that passed from, from both congress and the um, bjp government tada poda there are these are all the laws where parliament and both houses are uh, convened together and these laws were passed why don't you convene together the both houses of the parliament if you don't have a majority and uh, you can pass the law this this especially this government uh, modi government has uh, passed many draconian laws it's every day uh, go to parliament some bill is brought to parliament and that that they, that will take away the everybody's right one day take tax doctors right one day take parliamentary rights one day take women right one day take rpi out so this every other day this government is bring uh, everybody right by bringing some new law we have seen uh, the uh, the very bad laws the country was un- completely in in turmoil uh, so but they, but they they don't have a commitment to bring the women rep- representation even in my personal opinion um, see even parties are very sincere in bringing women to politics so they can resolve without this law 
you can reserve certain amount of third say 30 33% reservation seats in your own party you can bring an amendment to your party rules and you can um, feel 33% women candidates uh, so that that's actually much better than this law because actually when you, every party have a 33% reservation of women there are more chances of more than 50% women getting into the seats but that's not necessarily a woman can fight against a woman woman can fight against a man woman can fight against woman anybody you know that gives more chance to more women coming into parliament so uh, my feeling is the roadblock is commitment of the political parties Exactly. some party have more commitment some party have less commitment i will not say any party have 100% commitment uh, uh, to this things and apart from that actually see i said there are 1 million women being empowered overnight now it's been coming to coming close to 2 million women so my i am every day wondering where are these 2 million women they are panchayat president they are a uh, union councillor they are district councillor they are district chairman they have experienced uh, they have hands on experience of the ground in the beginning they have hands on experience of the bureaucracy but after the reservation period over they actually all send back to the kitchen again i am not saying going to kitchen is a bad thing why kitchen is allotted to only women men also can come there if they cook also we can eat no it's not that cooking is only art uh, women can uh, perform better in but who can come if, if you open a gas anybody can cook so it's basically uh, after 2 million women uh, are enter into field every year two different 2 million women might enter into this field. it's a huge number so out of this 2 million women this people cannot 543 mp candidates uh, 4500 mla candidates so this is only a commitment issue i see that's the road block but people yeah. like me will keep on fighting for it it's our right it's not some something which is uh, given to us as a um, you people don't have any talent okay you also come it's not that case it's a pure based on merit that's 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 very encouraging ma'am i mean congratulations and then all the best for that but then to, so i'd like to sort of uh, come to the last question that i'd have for you now uh, which is again a little interesting that i'd like to sort of think about it um, as so with over two decades of experience in the field i mean you've had significant uh, you know engagement with people and in the public sphere and you've faced a good share of gendered uh, bullying and heckling too and then you just said that that's their problem that's not my problem which is a very brave thing to say and it's a very right thing to say also but then off late i mean we also see that such practices have gone up and more worrying is they've become normalized young girls and women are subject to sort of you know gendered slurs for speaking their minds out in this context unlike i mean a few people i'd like to ask you what is the advice that you'd like to give the men you know who are out there both the good ones and the bad ones the good ones who fight or who are silent or the bad ones i mean i'd like to think that the ones that are silent are also bad but again the bad ones that engage in such gendered heckling towards you know that's a good one thank you so i mean uh, towards building such a harmonious space you know where ideas coexist what is the advice that you have for the men see see basically i believe nobody is born as a bad right so uh, there, is, there are there are society there are structures there are organization there are system exist before a child born so this has a very considerable family society is school education institutions these are all the having a, uh, even our uh, cinemas or uh, even social media the many uh, many fields around us uh, have a very profound impact on our lives some people uh, draw a good thing from this things some people draw a bad thing from them then also that uh, how actually they have been taught in their home schools and uh, society so these are all the places these people in, uh, greatly influence and they made up their mind for what they are so in my feelings the entire system around us is telling us men woman is a body she is a pr- property of a man and they are actually simply a sexual object nothing more not not, not beyond it so these are all the uh, learning actually one get from the society and all other institutions this basically undermine the woman physically mentally emotionally uh, from the truth but men grow with this kind of and i'm not saying men alone there are section of women in now it's i'm i'm happy that it's reducing also have this uh, kind of patriarchal mindset see for example somebody loves someone you go and express her uh, if she agrees it's fine if she doesn't agree you have to respect that right 
if it may happen to you some some girl also can come and express her willingness her, her love to you if you agree you people move on if you don't agree then the girl will look uh, will move on so this is happen this can happen to both men or women but if a man express a love to woman if she not agree immediately this guy actually tend to think that how can how dare you are not accepting my proposal so this is how more 99% acid attacks are happen so then sexual violence are happen why because uh, because i if i flirt on you so i like you if you have to come to my bed this is have this nothing to do with education even you have seen ceos of big corporate companies been axed there some many political leaders across the party actually is been prosecuted uh, even the school school children actually uh, going through sexual harassment from their own teachers even we you know phd students are uh, harassed by their uh, guides so these are all happening across the globe it's not uh, alone in india india is much more uh, india and asia is much more higher because we are more patriarchal society we don't have voice we get scared to express what happened to us because society will uh, criticize the victim they will not criticize the perpetrator so this is the situation so this mindset has to be changed from the beginning i don't think this mindset can be changed after 20 years 24 years so we have to start the conversation with the young minds from from the primary schools as uh, to respect women so, see basically love what is life life is about love and happiness and peace these are all the three things made out of a good life if you i i i i will tell men see you love you love the woman around you you respect women around you so that will give you happiness and peace by abuse her by using violence against her physically sexually family wise you are not going to achieve anything see and also you have to realize that what are the ideology you learn from this society or your family your education institution so that's no longer exists you understand it we are the, we are not the women of stone age now we understand what we are what our worth what our rights we are courageous enough to face any obstacle any violence any abuses coming towards us so we are no longer the same age old uh, traditional women who are afraid of uh, coming out of the house who are afraid of speaking the injustice that to us or afraid of uh, speaking out the abuses or the sexual violence happened to us so we are we have changed a lot you have to change according to that otherwise you will lose your life and you also pre- create a problem to woman life so both way actually you are not useful to the society you are not if you are not a human being there is no point you are a man so you lose your uh, uh, you actually you are actually reducing yourself less than an animal so why is it there so there is a one uh, saying in tamil aridu aridu maanidurai pirathal aridu so it's very rare to born as a human being but somehow you got the opportunity and a born as a human being and you will live your life and let life other way you will face the music from the woman we are no longer going to be quiet uh, this is no longer a very old traditional society we have grown up please grown up and try and learn respect to women that actually gives us space happiness peace to the complete society and the family to live each other in a family you don't respect each other you don't understand each other you don't love each other how you can be happy and peaceful then what kind of a what kind of activation your son or we don't understand each other we are fighting each other we we use the violence as a means then you will face the same thing it's not you are going to be young forever then you are uh, you will have your own time to get things back but one thing i would like to make a point here things has changed not only in terms of women even young men have changed a lot because there are like as you said the people who are silent also culprits there are actually many men started speaking out against the violence sexual violence or family violence domestic violence abuses against women i have seen in the nirbhaya a thing happen there are many men out in the street uh, in support of uh, the uh, in support of women boys they condemn it so that way that still there is slowly a portion of men actually is uh, realizing the realizing what is right men is not a gender it's it's basically whether men are a woman is a human being we are not if we are not a human being there is no point we are being a man and violence and abuses is not the way forward 
so that's why i am really happy that many men also uh, join in, uh, in the voices which we raise for decades and centuries so that way things will slowly improve if they are not improving themselves they will not change themselves definitely they may to change it. their 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 style of behaving the problem on that on that very articulate rooted and insightful note we come to the end of this interview ma'am I and mean, thank you very much for taking the time out to talk to us we wish you uh, we wish the best for you for all your good intentions to come true thank you very much vanakkam thank you very much for this great opportunity i wish all of you a very great life and best of luck thank you nandri <laughs>